where we're going to declare the Word of God together. Really pay attention to what this says. It's, it's, it's good. It's uh, Mark, Mark 4, 24. It says, Then he added, Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you, how many, how many was here last week for the message? Now, did you hear the Lord any more this week? Did you, did you try to, did you, did you make any connections? Anybody make, can hear something this week? That's good. Did you change anything in your life? Praise the Lord. That's good. All right. We're getting smaller and smaller numbers, but I'm believing that, that God's going to do great things as, as you hear the voice of the Lord. God wants to speak to you. He does. He's speaking to you. I, I believe this. This, this is one of the most important messages for a pastor or anybody to preach is you can still hear the voice of the Lord. He's still speaking. It's not just for the preacher. It's not just for the Sunday school teacher or, or somebody you think that's uh, you know, up here in their spiritual walk and I'm just down here. No, he wants to speak to every person. It's a, at the foot of the cross. Every one of us are at the same level. We really are. I believe that. It's just some of us choose to come up higher. And it's up to every person in here. You can choose to come up higher this morning. I'm going. Whether you want to go or not, I'm going. Amen? I don't care what this world does. I'm going. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going to get closer to Him. And, and, and as I was preparing for this message, I started thinking... I'm, I'm in no way a great theologian. I'm really not. I, I've heard some amazing preachers preach. I've, I've, been, I've been privileged to go to conferences and, and, and hear some amazing people, that, that men of God and women of God, who've dedicated their life to just the study of the Word and unfo unfolding great revelation and just sit there and listen as it's like, wow, that is so good. I wish I could preach like that or teach like that. I have. I, I stand before you the prime example of a God, a, a, God, a creator of the universe wanting to speak to an ordinary person. I promise you that. I am. I'm, I'm that. I'm the prime example. But I'll tell you this. Proverbs 22, 17 says, Son, if you'll incline your ear to wisdom. If you will incline your ear to wisdom, that means if you pick up the Word of God and you'll start reading it and really start leaning into it, He'll take anybody and He'll pour into them and he'll let, you'll, you'll hear the voice of the Lord. I promise you that. You're sitting, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about you know, how many times the Lord has spoken to me in my life that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that He spoke to me. There are too many times to talk about, but I, I could go on for, for hours about it, and my journal's full of it, and, and I've really only journaled for the last 10 years, but I, I wish I'd have journaled when I, when I was in business or back, all the way back. If, if you don't journal, you need to journal, and start writing down the things that the Lord has spoke to you, because He's speaking to you for your family, for your children, something you can hand down to your children, amen? I believe that. You're sitting in a cowboy church this morning that used to be in the middle of a hayfield. This used to be just a hayfield. Five, six years ago, it was just a hayfield. There was a berry patch back here, and Mr. Curtis Wilhoyd owned it. And, and you wouldn't be sitting here today if I, if I hadn't heard the voice of the Lord say, start a cowboy church. You say, well, that's really presumptuous of you, isn't it? No. It's true. I heard the voice. I promise you, I heard the Lord say that. And, 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 and <laughs> he spoke to me and said, don't move to Colorado. Start something here. I took you out there to show you what to do here. No one will ever convince me that he didn't say that to me. Because after he said this to me, 
I, I don't say I argue with I'm, I, the Lord dealt with me this week not to say I argued with him. I, yeah, that's right. I took my concerns to him. <laughs> remember how Gideon, do you remember Gideon in the Bible when he was down in the threshing, the threshing floor? He was hiding down in the, he was literally hiding, threshing his wheat down in the, the threshing floor. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon goes, who, me? I can hear his voice go up a little bit. Can't you just squeak a little bit? Who, me? Because he was hiding, threshing his wheat. That's how I felt when the Lord said, I want you to start a cowboy church in Tennessee. And I'm like, I was like, Lord, this is my concerns. Who, me? You know, I know, they know, I'm not a cowboy. This was my concerns. I'll just be honest with you. I promise you, this is the conversation I had with the Lord. They know, we know, we all, everybody knows. And then he spoke another word to me. And he said, I'm going to use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And I was like, all right, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. If you want me to dress up like a clown and stand on my head and start a clown ministry, I'll do it. But I'm not going to argue with you. And I'm not going not gonna, to not gonna discuss that. I'm just going to believe you. Trust you. Amen? I believe that. You see, I love, you know, because Brenda says we got to read his word. Why do we read his word? Because we can't claim his promises. We can't heed his warnings. We can't follow his directions. It's a mantra that we have at this church anymore. It's going to be with us forever. Because it's true. If I hadn't read that verse, I'm going to use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If I hadn't used, if I hadn't read that and put it in my heart and my spirit, how could he brought that back to remembrance? See what I'm saying? And so it's part of part of hearing the voice of the Lord is practicing to hear his voice. I heard the I heard the voice of the Lord when even on the size of the building that you're sitting in. It was going to be 20, the sanctuary was going to be 20 feet shorter. And you can imagine trying to fit, right now we're trying to figure out how to build a bigger building. You wouldn't know about this morning service because there's a lot of folks out because they're not feeling well. But it's really full. And, but I know that he spoke to me and said, if you build it, I'll fill it. How big's your faith? Amen? And he's filled it. He's filling it twice. On Sundays. I believe that. And so I know that, that he speaks to us. Because, um, yeah, we'll go on. <laughs> he spoke to me one time during the middle of a TV show. Have you ever had him, has ever had God have speak to you in a TV show? You're like, that's not, that's not, that's not very religious. I told you, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the poster child for God speaking to an ordinary person. I promise you this. I, I, was, I was talking with the Lord. He, I've been praying with him in several mornings, and I said, you know, I've been talking and discussing with him. I said, Lord, you know, when, we, when I go to the city, I have such a burden. There's so many people. There's people everywhere. And I got the good news inside of me. And I want to I reach as many people. God used me to reach as many people as I can with the, the news of Jesus. I just want to reach more people. And I felt you get just kind of discontinued where you're at, you know, because even the state superintendent for AG comes and goes, Tim, the church is growing in the middle of nowhere. He said, could you imagine if we give you the, 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 the camp in Nashville, what you could do? But God didn't call me there. Call me here. And so in the middle of watching a TV show, a cooking show, <laughs> here we go. You must think that's all I do is watch cooking shows. It's about the only thing clean on TV anymore, you know? But anyway, so I was watching, I was watching a cooking show, and there's a true story. It's, a, it's a, a, the greatest kitchens in the world, and there's this place where you fly into Denmark, and then you get in a car, and you drive like seven hours in the middle of nowhere. The restaurant seats like 15 seats. It's just a 15-seat restaurant, and it's booked for two years solid. And the plates are just astronomical if you look at the price of it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me while I'm watching this TV show, and he says, if you serve good enough food, people will come from everywhere. 
And that's the way it is with the Word of God. The Word of God is so much better than food. Amen? And so I know He speaks to us. I used to, uh, even, even up to probably the last three years, I used to make excuses why, why we're a cowboy church. You know, people would, you always catch all kinds of flack. Even, even, even last week I had uh, someone, uh, I had flack. You know, we got, we got a message on, online caught flack from somebody and about that. And, and, and you know what? But the Lord called me to do what he wants me to do. And, and so I was thinking about this, and, and I was making excuses for, you know, because I had one, yeah. <laughs> and, and he spoke to me this. He said, why are you, why don't you embrace the unique gift I've given you? He told me that. And so I changed it. I started saying, okay, I'm not apologizing anymore. I'm going with what the Lord wants me to do. And then he said this to me. He said, some ministries go out to the street corners to reach people. He said, I've given you the street corner and people will come to you. And that was amazing. God's good, isn't he? I was thinking about this. Every year I pray and I ask the Lord, Lord, give us a word for the church, for a direction for the next year. He's given me the word for next year. It's exciting. But this year, it was the year of the outpouring. It's still there. It's still the outpouring still here. Still not the end of the year yet. And I remember when I was, how many was here during the flood and seeing the craziness that was just going on? I mean, there was helicopters landing. There was trucks and trucks and trailers lined up. And I mean, it was just like, I, I explained it to someone and I didn't even realize what I had said until after I said it. I said, it's like somebody turned a faucet on on top of our church and just poured out stuff on top of our church. We didn't go looking for it. I promise you that. There's no other reason that God would just pour it out. I mean, literally, that I, I can't imagine. And, and this is it. It's not us. It is people, the, the body of Christ from everywhere. Because I would have people, when, when I'd go to, you'd go to deliver or just meet somebody, and they would come up and, and they'd hug you and say, I don't know how we can repay you. And I would stop them. I'd say, no, it's God. God is good. I said, it's not us. It's people from everywhere body of Christ all over the United States wanting to pour love. I said, we're just a funnel. That's it. We're just a funnel. But it's good to be a funnel, isn't it? But I remember as I was walking through the sanctuary, I was tired. We had just loaded and unloaded and loaded and unloaded this sanctuary probably four times. And I was walking through the mountains of toilet paper and paper towels and, and medicine And the Holy Spirit whispered in my spirit, remember I gave you the word outpouring for this year. And I was like, holy cow, it's here. Amen? And so I'm telling you, the, the Lord's wanting to speak to you. The Holy Spirit's wanting to speak to you. I I can go on for like this for hours about how many times. One time I was walking through D.C. I I like taking my kids to places. And I was in the Natural History Museum. This is the first time that he just lit a fire into me and said he's coming back. I was walking through the History Museum, American History Museum, going from where there's horses all the way to they're shooting a man to the moon. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, I'm coming back. Knowledge will increase many shall rush to and fro. I'm, going, I'm walking as I'm walking, looking at these ex- exhibits of a horse and then a horseless carriage, then a car, then a faster car, then an airplane. Then a, and, and the whole time, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. But you've got to put something in in order for Him sometimes to speak to you. Amen? Sometimes he's, He has spoken to me in single words. Most of the time it has been. The very first time I remember that it was so memorial to me, he spoke to me about the church being indifferent. Take it or leave it. They're just like, yeah, why not? Sure. And this was, I was leading worship. 
I'll never forget, I, I, I was in a dream I had. I was, I was leading worship. Half the church was like on fire, worshiping the Lord. I mean, just praising the Lord. And the other church, was the other side of the church was just sitting there. And I was like, I don't understand it. So I tried to lead worship harder. And this side just still didn't get it. And this side was just ca- catching fire. And I said, Lord, what is it? And he said, they're indifferent. I had to go look up the, what the word means. Indifferent. It means that they, they don't care either way. If they get it, that's great. If they don't, that's fine. Indifferent. And, and so the Lord, he speaks. He's spoken the word indifferent, move, unload. They don't want to get delivered. I've been in the middle of praying for somebody for deliverance. Yes, and, and God still delivers people from spirits. I've been in the middle of praying for somebody for deliverance, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says they don't want to get delivered. They don't want to get rid of it. And I'll stop, I've stopped in the middle of prayer and say, do you want rid of this? And they said, no, it helps me. You can't make that stuff up. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. He's spoken the word acceleration. He has spoken to me before the word, that's the one, not for you. Go talk to the man. Go see it. These are just a few of the times he has spoke to me. I, I, I'm telling you. For, and so I'm not saying all these things to try to build myself up. I'm just saying I'm, I am the poster child for, for God wanting to speak to an ordinary person. He wants to speak to you, every person in here. Do you believe that? And, and, if, and if I could say, hey, I could give you a guarantee that the creator of the universe wants to talk to you, boy, you'd be signing up, wouldn't you? Amen. But there's some things that hinder us from hearing his voice. I went through some of these last week. Um, I'm going to just go real quickly through the ones I did last week. The first one is, I must quit pouring my time into things that have zero positive impact on my life. I'm not going to let you off the hook. Did anybody do that this last week? Did anybody start cutting some of the stuff off that that has zero positive impact in your life? Anybody? It'll help you. It'll start removing, you'll start hearing the Lord more. If a boat's sinking in the ocean, you've got to plug the hole first. Amen? Second one was quit hanging out with the wrong kind of people. Holy Spirit doesn't want you entangled with the wrong kind of people. You're to love everybody, but not entangle your life with them. Amen? Third thing was, is quit, stop criticizing and judging other people. God doesn't, a negative mindset, remember that? A negative mindset is the opposite sound of what the what Lord's voice sounds like. He's not a negative person. He doesn't speak negative things. Amen? And, and I don't know if I, I wasn't quite clear with it last week, but I want you to hear this. Not just criticizing or judging other people, but quit criticizing yourself. Quit judging yourself this morning. You know, there's a place when, when uh, who was it in the Bible? I think it was Paul when he, when he met some Jews and he talked to them about Jesus. They literally judged themselves unworthy. Remember that? Well, if you don't, I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> He did. Paul went to go minister to these, some of these Jews. They had been taught Judaism their whole life, and he told them about Jesus, and it sounded too good to be true. But they also said, we're, we're not worthy of that. And the Bible says that, that they judge themselves unworthy. Let me tell you something. Your price tag for your life is pr- you're priceless. Jesus paid the price for you. Amen? It's so good. Think about this. I hate yard sales. Do you like yard sales? Well, I like going to them. How about how many like setting up yard sales? Let me see. Anybody like setting up a yard sale? No hand goes up. That's right. If you do, I'm talking to you about after service. <laughs> and the worst part is pricing stuff for yard sales, right? You love it? Oh, come see her. She'll volunteer Tamara for every yard sale you have. But you know, I get I go to I go to this piece and I'm like, it's I think it's worth fifty dollars. I probably paid fifty dollars for it, but I put fifty cents on it and I probably have to give it away. You know what I'm talking about? Well <laughs> Yes you do, Gary. I've moved you before. I <clears throat> love you, buddy. That's right. <laughs> so 
Think about your price tag this morning. Your price tag, Jesus paid the price for you. He said, you're worth it. You're worth it this morning. I know I talk about this a lot, but it's so important. Quit criticizing and judging yourself. If you always say, I'm poor, poor, pitiful me, I'm terrible, I'm not worthy, I'm not anything, you're not going to hear Jesus speak to you, the Holy Spirit speak to you. Amen? All right. I got three for you this week too. You ready? Write these down. I want you to, I want you to take them to heart. Think about it. We want to hear the voice of the Lord. Here's the first one. Quit magnifying the mountain. Quit magnifying the mountain. Mark 11, 22 through 25. This is Jesus speaking. You don't have to take my word for it. Take Jesus. He said, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For as surely I say unto you, Whoever says to this mountain... Be removed and cast into the sea. and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. That's hard to get your mind wrapped around, isn't it? Therefore I say to you, whatever you ask when you're, you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand when praying, if you have something against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. This is the thing I want you to see. I I used this verse Wednesday night. If if you weren't here Wednesday, it was was a good message. It was short, but it was good. It was called partnering with God in, in prayer. Partnering with Jesus. It was good. But here's the thing. Which habit do you have? Ask yourself this morning, right now. Ask yourself, which habit do I have? Speaking about the mountain are speaking to the mountain. If a person's dealing with suicide, you speak to it and say, in the name of Jesus, you go. If, you, if someone's got, whatever the issue is, that's why I ask them a lot of times, what are you dealing with? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If someone's dealing with fear, I say fear in the name of Jesus, you've got to go. Anxiety, you've got to leave at the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And at the name of Jesus, they got to go. So everybody's like, yeah, 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 we're good with that. Then he woke me up one night. Remember I told you if I'd have listened to him in the daytime, he wouldn't have to wake me up at night, so that don't sound so spiritual now, right? But he woke me up in the middle of the night, and he said, and I wrote three pages on this. He said, when you want to pray for healing, pray the same way. And I'm like, ooh. That takes courage. It takes courage to walk up to somebody and say, cancer in the name of Jesus, be gone. But I'll never forget the first time I did it, and it went. I remember that. You come, you come to a healing service and that's how I'll pray over you. I will speak to the disease and tell it to go at the name of Jesus. About three of you agree with me on that one and understand it. I told you I'd sound crazy, but that's the way it works. Speak to the mountain. Amen. Yeah. I'll never forget when Kurt, the, Kurt was the first one that I prayed like that for after that. I remember that. I remember that, that morning. I, th- I was getting ready to pray for him. And the Holy Spirit reminded me and said, speak to it and tell it to go in Jesus' name. I'm thinking, they're going to think I'm crazy. Kurt's going to think I'm crazy. I said, here goes, Lord. <laughs> me and you, I'm crazy. I said, cancer go in the name of Jesus. They still can't find it. Amen? Stage four. Still can't find it. Amen? I remember that. And then after that, the Lord started dealing with him about trusting in him. Trust in him. Amen? Kurt, if you're watching this, I believe that still God's, God's got it. I believe that. Amen? Don't talk about the mountain. Talk to the mountain. You'll hear the voice of the Lord. Oh, that's good. It's way better than your... Than your, than your, than your you're letting on. Here's the second thing. You ready? Quit overbooking. Quit overbooking. Do you know the number one response in America to the question, how you doing? 
I'm busy. That's right. I'm busy. You get so busy you can't hear the voice of the Lord. If you're real spiritual, you'll say, I'm, it's a good busy. I'm busy, but it's good. That's good things. No, it's still busy. And listen to me, the greater responsibility that you have, the less you can book. When you grow up and you, and you get families and you got kids and stuff like that, you just can't book everything into your life. Listen to me on this. I know what I'm talking about. Greg Rogel, a great pastor, he says, do less to do more. I'm, I'm trying to learn this. I just, if you want to pray for your pastor, pray for this in my life. Help me not to overbook. I forget about stuff all the time. I, I, I'll book two things at one time. And Jen said, you don't, you don't book nothing unless you talk to me. I'm like, Amen. <laughs> I'll forget it. But I, I, I'm finding myself more in these last weeks because it's working. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. I found myself more to say, I'm not in charge of that. TV and sports and work. Cooking shows. That's right. Beat Bobby Flay. Let me tell you, your kids don't need to play every sport. But they will need to know who Jesus is. Amen? Life is not about doing more. It's about doing what's most important. You know, Mary and Martha, when they, when you, you, everybody knows the story. Martha was running around fixing the table, trying to serve everybody, trying to do everything, cooking the best she could, cleaning. And, and Mary was just sitting there at the feet, feet of Jesus, just listening to him, just wanting to hear, just wanting to get whatever she could. And, she's, and, and Martha started criticizing her. Saying, look at Mary. Mary's just sitting there. She's doing nothing. She's doing nothing. Make her get up. Make her help me. Make her serve people like, like me. Let me tell you, there's people that want to run your life. And, 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 and Jesus said, Mary's chosen the most important thing. Jesus said it. This morning, don't get too busy where you forget the most important thing. If you want to hear his voice, I'm telling you, this is, you say, well, this is so practical, Tim. I told you I'm the poster child for an ordinary person God wants to speak to. Now, now you can take this and you can run the opposite way and say, I don't want to serve nobody. That's laziness. Amen? Because Jesus didn't say you had to be, you relate. He, there's a couple things in the Bible the, the, the Lord does not like, and that's one of them. That's real bad. Okay. Last one. Quit trying to please everybody. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, you're going to go opposites of what culture says. Amen? <laughs> when, I, when I moved from PA to Tennessee, I went against a lot of people what they thought was best for my life. And they were good people. They love me. They're good to me. But I had I couldn't I didn't I don't live to please them. I live to please God. Do you understand? We we my when I when I moved Pens from Pennsylvania, I had a good job. I had a great job. My father-in-law's a, a good fair man. He's a good man was raising me up in the company, just kind of grooming me and trying to, he was pouring into my life, mentoring me in ways that he didn't even know. And, and, and there was a, I, and the ministry was thriving. I was going and playing and singing and, and music everywhere. And I had a nice house in my, and, and the, the, the family up there loved me and awesome friends and a good church. But that wasn't God's plan for my life. If I had stayed there, you'd have never be sitting here this morning. You understand? And the Holy Spirit kept telling me, you know, I've got something for you elsewhere. And, and I'll never forget when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It doesn't make sense on paper. <laughs> if I'd have sat down when I was in Pennsylvania and say, ah, this don't make no sense. My house is going to be paid off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be running a company. It's going to be good. I'm not going to have to worry for things. But look at I'm telling you, when we moved here and I followed the Lord and I followed what he heard, because I was moving to Tennessee with no job, three kids, no concrete plan, just going to be a tambourine whacker. 
play Christian country music. I really thought that's what it was. But God has a plan, and, and, and you've got to hear his voice. It's so important for you. Make him number one. Pleasing God has to be number one priority in your life. Well-meaning people will tell you how to raise your family, how to live, how to spend your time, spend your money. But you better listen to God. Amen? <laughs> people will come alongside you and even in, in ministry, and they see something that God's built in us. They'll want you to go every direction with them. But the question I have to do anymore is, what does God say? Amen? They might be good things, and these might be good people, but they didn't die for you. Right? We don't live for people. We live for God. Boy, it's good, isn't it? I... uh one of the first things I did when the Holy Spirit spoke to me this is to start a discipleship class at my, at my, at my business. And I, I picked 12 guys. The Lord told me which 12 guys, and I picked 12 guys. Some of them still walk with me today, many of them. I was friends with all of them. But they would, they would come to my office, and we would sit down, and we'd talk about the Lord, and we'd do a Bible study together. And I'll never forget, I, I, I said, this is the topic, this is what the Lord told me to do, to write down two things that most affect you in your life, what's the two things that you struggle with. The number one thing that was in that jar when I, when I tallied up all the, the things was fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. Fear. Fear is the number one man killer. You can't serve God and fear people. Amen? You can't serve God and crave the approval of people and hear God. Fear stunts growth. It kills God's dreams in your life. And you'll miss the mark. I promise you that. King Saul in the Bible, he was God's first choice to be anointed. Samuel anointed Saul first. But fear won in his life. Isn't that something? Think about that. And when God called you to raise your family, hear me on this, when God called you to raise your family and how to live, it wasn't a conference call. I said party line in the first service, but I dated myself. It wasn't a conference call for the young people in here. It wasn't a Zoom meeting. It was a private conversation. Amen? Amen? And so listen to me. If you want to take an earmuff off, quit trying to please everybody. Live to please God. That's good. And the last one I'm going to give you is, is a hearing aid. I gave you a hearing aid last, year, last week. I'm going to give you one this week. It's going to be quick, I promise. Write it down. This is the hearing aid. It's very easy. Obey immediately. Delayed, disobedi delayed obedience is still disobedience. Do you understand that? And, and that verse that we read, the very first verse, it says the closer you listen. I really believe this, that the closer you obey when the voice speaks to you, the more you'll receive. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Did you get that? You need that. The sooner you obey... The, the voice of the Lord, when He speaks to you, the more you will receive afterwards. It's, it's true. I'm telling you, I, I'll stake my life on that one. I'm, I'm just an ordinary person that God started speaking to, and I decided to start listening to Him and obeying. But there's still times in my life where I slip and I don't, and I've got to get better. Amen? I'm preaching from what I know, what I hear. Don't let the communication break down. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. When you hear my voice, obey my voice. They go together like a glove and a hand. There's no shortage of information in this country. There isn't. We live in the, we live in the age of knowledge, the age of information. 
what I'm saying is, if you want to get in shape, there's no end of how much stuff there is out there on how to get in shape. They got apps for it. They got a fitness store on every corner. They, they got stuff everywhere, don't they? It's up to you. It's up to me. It's the same with the Word of God. There's no shortage right now of people preaching these amazing revelations. But very few people are walking out the doors and applying these amazing revelations. Woo-wee, that's good right there. Amen? I've just preached to you simple message, simple ground. Anybody in here can understand this, but how many people will go out these doors? I, I love Hillary one time. I said something that he, he'd never forget. I said, one out of a hundred will read the Bible. The 99 will read the man. He got, he got a hold of that and started reading his Bible. It's the same way when, we, when, we, when I preach the word. If you listen and hear the voice of the Lord, walk out the doors and apply it to your life, you'll be surprised. All of a sudden, you'll start walking down the street. You'll hear the voice of the Lord and say, don't go that way, go this way. Talk to this person. Pray for that person. Don't make that decision. Don't buy that car. See, you think that God just, just wants to speak to the preacher to give you some great revelation. No, he wants to speak to you on your level, right where you're at for your family. He'll speak to you and say, your kids are doing this. You need to pray for them. You need to deal with them in this way. Your kids are dealing with this right now. And, and he'll warn your heart and, 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 and then speak to you. He'll tell you, if you, you know... Oh, never mind. It's all good. <laughs> Are you getting it though this morning? He wants to speak to you on your level, right where you're at. You don't have to be some great theologian. You just got to obey what you hear. I would rather walk with someone that knows, that memorized one verse that's living it out than someone that has memorized the whole Bible that's not living any of it. And I'm sure that's what God wants to do too. Amen? It's good. I'm going to read that, that first verse that we, that's my last one, I promise you. It's Mark 4, the same, the same one we opened up with. Listen to it again. Listen to it. Make it in your heart. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. The more, and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away. Let me tell you, I really believe it's what it means is if you don't, don't obey what you hear, you will, you will lose even what you hear. And you'll harden your hearts. God's good. He's so good, isn't he? I'm so glad he wants to speak to me. I have to have the voice of the Lord. I'm so thankful for him. If you would, just bow your heads to me. You know, this, this message wasn't a salvation message. But a young lady gave her heart to the Lord in the first service. Because that's how it starts, by the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And if you're here this morning and you say, I, 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 I hear the Holy Spirit. I want to give my life to Jesus. I've never surrendered my life. I would love for the creator of the universe to speak to me. But I've never surrendered my life. But I, feel, I, hear, I hear him saying, come, give your life to me. Get, surrender your, my, your life to me. If that's you this morning... Is there anybody who would love to say that? I would love to pray with somebody this morning that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. I hear him speaking to my heart right now. Surrender your life to him. Here's the second part of, this, of the altar call. If you're here this morning, you say, I want to hear his voice. I want to remove all the obstacles in my life. I want to hear his voice. And there's certain things that... As you were preaching, Pastor, that I, that dealt my my heart, and I want to hear His voice more. Come this morning, I want to pray with you. I want to agree with you in prayer. 
Pastor Tim Goss here. Thank you so much for joining us at, at Crossroads Cowboy Church for service. I hope the Lord touched your heart. I know that he's, he's, he is here and he's leading us and guiding us. And maybe you were watching and the Holy Spirit really pulled on your heart. and You never gave your heart to Christ or maybe you just want to recommit your life to Christ. Well, it's as easy as asking him, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I need, I repent of my sins. I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that you came and you died for me and for my sins that I couldn't pay for. And uh, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and conf or confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that salvation shall come to you. And so if you did that, just then just start at living for him. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, show me, lead me and guide me. So excited for you if you did that. If, uh, if you would like to, to like and subscribe our channel, we would love that be able to share with others, maybe your friends. If you know somebody that doesn't know Jesus or, or they just need an encouraging word, um, just make sure you like and subscribe and share it with them. It's the easiest way you can do it. So thankful again that you are uh, joining us. Hope to see you again next time. God bless you.